So again, welcome everyone to this evening's presentation on Behold God in Everything as we explore eco-spirituality. We're going to begin with a reflection.
if you will, join me in the opening prayer. We have come to renew our covenant with you, Lord our God, and with one another in Christ Jesus, your son. We come to help protect your creation. We come as followers of Jesus, committing ourselves anew to one another and to heal injustice and poverty. We come to stand together against all threats to life. We come to discover some new beauty every day in your creation. And remembering that you speak to us through the beauty of creation, we, will, we come with our best selves to answer your call to reverence all creation. Amen. Let us listen to a uh, proclamation about the life of St. Francis, written by his biographer, Thomas Solano. St. Francis of Assisi's first biographer, Thomas of Chilano, describes the way of Francis like this. Who could ever express the deep affection Francis bore for all things that belong to God? For who would be able to tell of the sweet tenderness he enjoyed while contemplating in creatures the wisdom, power, and goodness of the creator? From this reflection, he often overflowed with amazing, unspeakable joy as he looked at the sun, gazed at the moon, or observed the stars in the sky. And let us hear now from Pope Francis in the Medoc to see. Please, thank you, Sharon. If the universe unfolds as God fulfills it completely, hence there is a mystical meaning to be found in a leaf, in a mountain trail, in a detail, in a poor person's face. It is not only to pass from the exterior to the interior, to discover the action of God in the soul, but able to discover God in all things. St. Bernard Chester teaches us that contemplation deepens the more we feel the working of God's grace within our hearts, and the better we learn to encounter God and creatures outside ourselves. It is no coincidence that in the canticle in which St. Francis prays God for his creatures, he goes on to say, Praise be you, my Lord, to those who give power and fear of all. Everything is connected. Concern for the environment of those needs to be joined to a sincere love for our fellow human beings and an unwavering commitment to resolving the problems of society. Thank you. And now wisdom from Richard Rohr. If we don't know how to love what's right in front of us, then we don't know how to see what is. So we must start with a stone. We move from the stone to the plant world and learn how to appreciate growing things and see God in them. In all of the natural world, we see the vestigia dei, which means the fingerprints or footprints of God. Perhaps once we can see God in plants and animals, we might learn to see God in our neighbors. And then we might learn to love the world. And then when all of that loving has taken place, when all of that seeing has happened, when such people come to me and tell me they love Jesus, I'll believe it. They're capable of loving Jesus. The soul is prepared. The soul 
is free. And it's learned how to see and how to receive and how to move in and how to move out from itself. Such individuals might well understand how to love God. And finally, some wisdom from Sister Ilya Delio. A human person is created to seek God in every aspect of life, charged with divine energy, and to love what he or she sees. In this respect, scripture is written daily in the supermarkets, nursing homes, playgrounds, post offices, cafes, bars, and in the scripts of home and community life. God is not hovering over us. God is the amazing depth, breadth, imagination, and creativity in culture, art, music, poetry, science, literature, film, gyms, and parks. All in some ways speak the word of God. Every place is the place to find God and God is in everything. We're gonna take five minutes of silent reflection. There are questions on your worksheets as well as on the PowerPoint to help prompt further thoughts, but reflecting on the readings that we just heard from Thomas Solano, from Pope Francis, from Richard Rohr, and from Sister Ilia Delio. When or where have you seen the footprint of God or fingerprints of God, the vestigia dei? And how does the way of St. Francis that Thomas of Solano spoke of invite us to see creation as kin? So I'm most curious from our group discussions uh, about the, really the third question there, can we think of ways to strengthen our own or our community's eco-spirituality practices? I wonder if you had a chance to tackle some of those. And I would offer for our consideration that there's a difference between right, uh, the kind of ecological work we can do to help protect the earth, like recycling. And that certainly is a practice that would be the fruit of a spirituality. But what are some of the spiritual, what are some of the spiritual practices? Did any of the groups have a chance to tackle some of that? Or of course you can share whatever was the fruit of your conversation. Um, why don't we start with the folks online if someone's willing to, to speak on behalf of the group. Yeah. Now they're all doing the... <laughs> <laughs> no, someone, someone willing to unmute themselves and to share a little bit, especially if you have the, if you have the eco-spirituality practices, uh, some of the spiritual practices or, or any of the fruit of your conversation. Dan. Okay, go ahead, Dan. Okay. Well, I'm just going to introduce Paul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we all uh, just shared, we had some beautiful uh, pictures of the uh, sunsets, uh, Lake Michigan, and Ian did a marvelous uh, just uh, description of, we couldn't actually see her picture, but she described it to us, uh, the mountains and the, all the colors of the sky, but we all decided that we, uh, we've we seen God's handiwork, uh, not only in each other, but also through and in nature. And we, we haven't, we didn't get to the part about really what we're doing and uh, as far as the eco-spirituality. One of the things that I've done is I like to 
to do uh, perennial beds. So I've been sharing on a regular basis, uh, beginning ready to split the daylilies. And I've got all different colors. And those go around to the neighbors. So we can see our daylilies in their gardening spaces, which is good. And the bountiful harvest that we've gotten in uh, tomatoes and cucumbers, they're still going, is we've been able to share those as well uh, with the neighbors, new neighbor uh, across the street, Kenny and Sam, and then, you know, just say, here, welcome. So, you know, um, I'll, I will just give up the floor if, if uh, Fran or Andy want to talk. It's coincidental that both of them come from families of 10, and they're the uh, number 10. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that was sort of thrown in at the end, talking sizes of families. But uh, we, uh, uh, like Dan said, we really didn't get into um, the eco spirituality part as far as our like parish or community. Um, we were so in depth in in nature, being all inspiring. God's sure. handiwork is everywhere. Um, that's uh, that's really the the gist of our conversation. Uh, I, I could. Uh, add on to that that uh um like dan was saying he's talking about uh his plants and everything and i i was saying how two of my parishioners we just had a hospitality sunday and and they literally brought in all these baby pollinator type plants and gave them away at the hospitality sunday and uh you know with little with little notes as to how to take care of them and stuff from milkweed all the way to the day nice. and stuff like that and um so just trying to get uh, get people in in a different type of way to understand what it's all about instead of just handing out pamphlets and stuff like that we yeah. thought it would be a good idea to hand out plants but great thanks Anne. thanks paul and dan how about here in the room some of the small groups the group over here karen sure um I was thinking of the spirituality of, uh, of echo spirituality. Uh, I was telling my group here that um, there is a documentary out that is called The Biggest Little Farm. I don't know how many of you have seen it. Um, right now, I believe it's on Disney Plus, but you probably could find it on Netflix. But it's a true story of a very young couple who uh, decided to buy a piece of land in California that was barren, nothing grew. And um, in three years, they transformed that into a very prosperous, beautiful oasis mm. of fruit trees and vegetables and all kinds of animals. And uh, in their process, um, they had to learn um, God's uh, creation of the circle of life because they could not get their land to do what they wanted it to do without using everything. Uh, as an example, we we shared uh, in the orchard in the orchard trees they were having a terrible time with slugs. And they would go out. I mean, they had too many trees to try to hand take these slugs off these trees. And um, they learned that if they got ducks, the ducks would eat the slugs. And they flooded the orchards with ducks. And it, it, it's the whole cycle of life that God created for us. And these two young people um, are very successful today. Uh, doing just that and yeah. serving a lot of California with very good, um, you know, earth and very good fruit and vegetables. And um, it's just a very loving uh, way to see God spiritually through his own creation. If we remember that we need to be the people that go out there and do that. Mm -hmm. He was a nature photographer for National Geographic. Mm -hmm. She was a personal chef. 
So they they used the resources. Okay. Wisely, and it's very well done. You have a chance to see it. It's great. It's all right. It's called the biggest little farm. I think it actually took before it really took off. It was about eight years. I mean, the, the land was just bad. Okay. All right. How about the group that was meeting in the back corner here? Just if you can, just use your outdoor voice a little bit so that the microphone picks up. Go ahead, Irene. Thanks. We mostly review where we see the footprint of God um, and talk quite a bit about both the natural world and also the worship space of the cathedral and um, kind of how we see God show up in leaves and drops of water and sunrises and things like that. But then also when we enter a communal shared space of worship like the cathedral, sort of the, we talk about this idea of the, the communion of the saints or just this feeling like you're in a place where so many people have come together to pray and worship and meditate over the years and how we feel God's presence in that place as well. Um, and then a little bit about the, that sense of kinship with nature and ways that the um, natural world reminds us of, of belonging to God in the same way that nature belongs to God. Great. Thanks. Yeah, I'll that. Thanks. Just Montessori. And Montessori is a really you good You know, I, I, I just made a connection that, uh, well, I, I've known it for, I'm old, so I've known it for a long time, but, I, but I've never connected it to uh, the eco, eco spirituality. And that's Montessori education. That's what it is. And here in, in Grand Rapids, our Grand Rapids area is one of the very, very few true Montessori middle schools where they're on a farm. Mm -hmm. And these kids spend the day on the farm, they run the farm, they care for the farm, and they care for the farm year round. It's not that they have the summer off, they all sign up for a time where they're taking care of the garden, they're taking care of the animals. And they really see and learn that cycle of life. And the cycle of life is so, so important. And Montessori education from preschool, infant, toddler, all the way through high school. And, and I, had, um, I had one middle school student come back to me and say to me, why did you teach me that? I said, teach you what? Why did you teach me to care for the earth? And, and he went back to East Grand Rapids. I said, because that's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're here to do, is to care. But he said, everyone teases me, bullies me, because I tell them to stop breaking the branches off the trees. Mm -hmm. And you know, that was an eye-opener for me. That uh, this, this, this whole sense of caring for the earth, it has to become much much broader yeah and you know that's kind of one of the things that that i see that happens at the cathedral kind of naturally and it happens here naturally there's a lot of talk about what are, what are you going to do what are we going to do how are we going to keep this going mm -hmm. and, and i think that that is extremely important to continue that and to expand that because the world right now, the earth right now, needs it needs help. Mm -hmm. It definitely needs help. And there's not enough of us that, that see that. Thanks, March. Yeah, and this group here. Oh, could I? I that's okay, because I was going to name you. I was going to. <laughs> I was going to name exactly like you. It wasn't explicit, but how you shared your eco spirituality at home. And every daily movement that you were sharing, that your kids now carried on into their professions. So that's what I was going to give rise to. Katie. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but I just wanted to say that I I just think it's um uh, I just love what uh, Marge was saying, but um, I'll tell you something. I don't like to be thought really weird to when you try to live simply. It's mm. it's. Oh, and it happened um, with our kids. It was it, it's kind of because we had we took some pledges in fact to live simply, and um, and and uh, we lived we 
moved from Detroit to uh, a, a kind of subsistence farm. And um, we really were trying to do that. And wow, it's not easy a lot of times. And it's not hard. It's not easy for kids. And, uh, and, and I think that as, as Marge is saying, we need more um, support and approval of doing things like that. And, you know, people, that, and this is just a <laughs> little thing out there. Lots of places now, in fact, this is great. My favorite store, the Goodwill, has um, not using plastic bags anymore. And, uh, and, but when I say no, no bags or no plastic bags, in a store, I mean, people around here, you know, but that, that's just a tiny little thing. But I, I'm really hoping that um, we think about these things and think about how we can support the various things. That we yeah. Have. yeah. Great. Thanks. Great. Yep. Um, this isn't a group thing. <laughs> discuss this in group, but I think we really need a lot more motivation as far as getting into uh, eco-spirituality. And I think in theory, one way we could do that is if the church and is, is if all of us really spread the word that we are being very offensive to God when we do all this polluting and spewing carbon dioxide and everything into the environment. If, if I had an artist acquaintance and I befouled his painting somehow and destroyed it, that would be very offensive to both the artist and the painter. Mm -hmm. Yet we have this glorious artist yeah. God yeah. who gave us this awesome creation and we befoul it and don't seem to care. <laughs> so, I mean, most of us don't really think about it that much. So, uh, and I think it's very offensive to God like it would be if you had an artist creation. So, I, I don't know how to get that necessarily. But... Well, thanks, Ray. You actually gave us a great segue to our next <laughs> element, which is we're gonna watch a short video from a group that is working to get that message out. Well, maybe in a little more positive way, but <laughs> uh, the Catholic Climate Covenant has, it's an initiative of the US Bishops Conference and have been working on not only ways to address uh, and climate change, um, in the spirit of Laudato Si. It was formed out of, after reading Laudato Si, uh, but also they're, they're also wanting to really educate people on exactly what you're saying about how we can take better care of the artist's work, of the creator's work. So we're gonna watch a short video on that. And uh, folks online, uh, Paul and Dan, can you just let us know if you can hear, if you can hear the, the video when it starts. My name is Russ Testa. I work with the Franciscan Friars of the Holy Name Province on the East Coast of the United States and also with the U.S. other OFM Franciscans as we're trying to join together into one province over the next few years. So it's great to be with you. Hi, and I'm Mary Ann Comfort. I'm a Justice Coordinator for Earth, Anti-Racism and Women for the Sisters of Mercy of the Americas. And Russ and I are also part of the small planning group um, for U.S. religious orders um, working on the Laudato Si Action Platform. As we look at the Laudato Si Action Platform and you go to the, uh, the website itself from the Vatican, you'll see what is how they describe at least the goal of eco-spirituality. 
looking at it that a profound, it's a profound connection that talks about connection and connectivity. And we hear that again, even echoed further, if we look even at Laudatio itself, where the Holy Father writes on in paragraph 89 that for it, he writes, for they are yours, O Lord, who love the living. This is the basis of our conviction that is part of the universe called into being by one father. All of us are linked by unseen bonds together, forming a kind of universal family, a sublime community which fills us with a sacred, affectionate, and humble respect. Here I would reiterate that God has joined us so closely to the world around us that we can feel the desertification of the soil as a physical ailment and the extinction of species as a painful disfigurement. So how do we come to experience these bonds of connection that Pope Francis talks about in Laudato Si? One of the elements for discovering these connections is to put ourselves in the spaces of awe or wonderment, that place where we are left speechless at a view of a vista or the incredible, incredible delicateness of a leaf or a bug, the face of a child or a parent or witnessing an act of kindness. When we are in these states of awe, these states of wonder, we often are a place where our barriers we often put up to protect ourselves and our psyches can be removed. And by removing these barriers, we allow ourselves to be more authentic in the life that God hopes for us. But unfortunately, as is implied in the quote from the Holy Father, there is sometimes a price to pay for the removal of these barriers. Developing a deep eco-spirituality will break your heart. As we see the death and destruction that can come from war or ecological catastrophe, the inhumanity we can visit upon one another. If we, but if we allow ourselves connected, we can have these, we will have our hearts torn, be torn apart. When you feel that aching of tragedy in a way, we are touching that sense of God's pain for creation, where we do not rise to the fullness of what God intends and invites us to be. These existential crises that we face in creation, whether it be through climate change or war, economic oppression, they're utterly painful. They can be debilitating if we don't see the gift part, the empowering part of what can come being part of eco-spirituality as a part of our life. The relational bonds of creation do allow us to actually soar, to be connected to creation and humanity as a part of it in such a way that we experience the fullness the completeness by sharing in that deep connection to our creator, in many ways, we touch God through creation in all its forms. This happens in no small part in doing the spiritual work, especially as community. Just as we ha can have our hearts broken by touching the tragedy of our world, when we hold each other together and connect in these bonds, they give us the strength and the power for the radical hope to continue our epic journey of transformation. The hope, this hope to develop the experience in these connections can also happen in all these moments of awe. But more often than not, they're often happening when we create and find the conditions to make these possible. So how do we do this? What are the activities and actions that can help us remove barriers, that separate us from the creation, that separate us from God, so that together we can realize these bonds and be empowered to release the full measure of what God wishes for us and empowers us? Marianne? Thank you, Russ. That was beautiful introduction to the goal. Um, and I just want to share with everyone um, some examples of how people have um, lived out and expanded and grown in eco spirituality. And it could be as simple as when you're gathering as a family, as a community around the dinner table. Do you include praying for the bounty of creation for the workers who brought the food that you are about to enjoy? People um, can take a walk, a prayerful walk together in, in a lovely space um, near your community, near your home. We can bless um, the trees that we're planting on our property. Uh, we can bless solar panels that we install on our, on our buildings. How do we use those as a moment of prayer and deep connection to the why of why we're taking these actions? Mm -hmm. And then of course we can pray outside. The Vatican in, in describing this goal of eco-spirituality is really calling us to liturgies outdoors, to prayers outdoors, which could be the, the usual Sunday liturgy or could be a special event like Earth Day or the Feast of St. Francis. 
And we also want to make this your own. So if we can look at the questions that we invite you into uh, to say, how do you make this your own? What fits for your own community? And you could look at who is going to be gathering and what will be meaningful to them. Where are you going to gather? Um, we had a group of sisters that did a retreat on water and they did this beautiful um, setting to set the atmosphere and have people think about the flowing nature of water and the abundance and gift that water is. And we can look at our cultural backgrounds. Um, what is special to us as a family, as a, as a parish community, as a ministry? Um, do we have celebrations uh, throughout the year that we can bring in prayers for creation and pray prayers to our God for the bounty of creation or lamenting its destruction? And maybe there's a new tradition you want to start. And of course, we can always bring in prayers um, when we gather for other events that touch um, the bounty of creation, um, lament the destruction, be mindful of people who are most experiencing the degradation of our earth. And one place you might want to start is the season of creation. Our global church celebrates this September 1st to October 4th. So if you're looking for a moment in time to really engage in eco-spirituality and, in and invite others to join you, this could be the time to insert that in your liturgy with homilies and shared prayers. Maybe you want to host an event um, celebrating um, our creation um, with another community um, near you. We could publicly pray during this time and develop a spiritual practice there during this time that we then continue throughout the year. There's so many things we can do with public statements, develop a study guide for um, everyone in our community um, for study and prayer around Laudato Si. We can bless a natural space for reflection or meditation, include a prayer for the bounty of the earth when we bless our meals we saw before. Create a prayer journal or bulletin board or other way of recording and sharing our prayers as we gathered in nature. And then we can visit another faith com community to talk with them about social and ecological initiatives and, and include um, prayer and, and um, reflection together. So those are just some of the ways that we invite you to think about um, how you can deepen your eco-spirituality and invite others in your family, in your community, in your ministry to do the same. Bria, well, I hope you heard some ideas there about how to get the message out at the end of their sister's list. Um, I want to circle back to one of the things Father Russ mentioned, that our key elements about eco-spirituality, one of them is how we create the opportunities to make connections. Right, where we feel connected to one another and to the world around us. Um, I think that's some of probably what emerged as you were sharing about how you, the places or the opportunities that you have where you behold God, there's a connection there. And he, he started with talking about that way that happens is because we have the opportunity to create the opportunities for wonder, for, for being in a state of wonder and awe. And the more we can foster that, exercise that, right? It's a gift that as Catholics, we believe we're given through the gift of the Holy Spirit at our baptism and strengthened through confirmation, this gift of wonder and awe. But it's something that we, we need to exercise like a muscle, if you will. But it's, it's the gift that God gives us in order to be able to see the way he is, all the fingerprints and footprints that he's left all around. So I'm going to ask you to exercise a little bit of wonder and awe at this point. And we're going to the final two elements of our evening together. We're going to uh, uh, move in again back into prayer. Uh, we're going to do a Franciscan Lexio of creation. Similar to Lexio Divina that has four movements in listening to a, the word of God. I'm going to invite you to contemplate the, either the picture that you brought or in your imagination, the memory of the place or person or, or thing that, that in which you behold God. So before movements, and in this case, they, um, the, and this is just to give credit where credit is due. This is from uh, Dr. Lawrence J, who is a um, 
uh, retreat center director. And based on Franciscan spirituality and the teaching of St. Clair, an example of St. Francis of Assisi, this Franciscan Lexio of creation is a Lexio Divina with a Franciscan twist uh, to create a new approach for the divine reading of nature as a way that we might not only know God more fully, but be known by God in turn. So I invite you to get comfortable, having maybe both feet on the floor, hands on your lap or at your sides. If you'd like to close your eyes. And to become more aware of your surroundings. Naturalists learn to be still and engage all five senses. as we sit quietly for a few moments. Be present in the moment by calming your mind and stilling your spirit. You can imagine being in that favorite outdoor place. Or if you'd like, you can slowly open your eyes to look at the photo that you brought with you. Begin to tune in, exercising your imagination to what sounds do you hear? As you take deep breaths, recall the sense that you can smell in this place. Allow your memory to recall the sounds, the smells, the sights. and imagine exploring this particular place. And simply be there. Don't rush. Don't try to force anything. In the second movement, we're invited to give consideration. Consideration to the scriptures and to the lessons from science that we have. In this place, what thoughts are triggered for you as you consider what you already know? Is there a story from scripture? that you're reminded of in this place. Think about what science has taught you about the aspects of this place. What does this knowing teach you about your relationship with God and all that the creator has made?
how do the environmental realities and issues we face today challenge this relationship? The third movement is to contemplate, to prayerfully bring to the creator your considerations in love. Given your considerations for scripture, science, your knowledge, what feelings stir in your heart? Let this become a prayer as you look on this place as you look on creation with love through the spirit and allow your contemplation to draw you closer to God. In your contemplation, what are you experiencing as true? In this fourth and final movement, care, I invite you to focus your attention once more on being in your favorite place or of the image you brought with you. And open your whole self to the creator to allow that place to lovingly gaze in, on you, to let this place this person to embrace you.
and I invite you to come back to this place and slowly, and as you do so, invite you to give consideration to what you can do to live out your growing convictions grounded in this place, grounded in your favorite place where you feel a connection to the creator. How can we imitate the creator's love and care for creation as kin, as brother, sister, neighbor, And when you are ready, you can open your eyes. as we seal this time and let's pray together, I'm going to invite actually us to, to say it here in the room, stanza by stanza. So from Irene over to Ray, and then from Sharon over to Cami and Mary Beth, if this can be side A and this can be side B, and just to pray the words that we have here on the screen or that can also be found in your, your handout. And so we seal our time together. The garden is rich with diversity, with plants of a hundred families in the space between the trees with all the colors and fragrances. Mint and lavender, great mystery, keep my remembrance pure. Raspberry, apple, rose, great mystery, fill my heart with love. Dill, anise, tansy, holy winds blow in me. Rhododendron, xenia, may my prayer be beautiful. May my remembrance, O great mystery, be as incense to thee in the sacred grove of eternity as I smell and remember the ancient forests of the earth. Amen. And our celebration wouldn't be complete if we didn't have a little bit of Francis's own words, brother, son, sister, moon. Sun, sister moon, your light shines from the heaven, giving glory, all the glory to the maker. Gentle wind, welcome home. Traveling with your song, singing glory, all the glory to the maker. Hallelujah, hallelujah, singing glory.
all you people join in the song. There is work to be done for the glory of the glory of the Maker. Amen. I want to thank you all for joining me this evening, exploring the theme of eco-spirituality and how we can foster that in our own lives, fostering a sense of wonder and awe, and also help get the good word out, right, Ray, to how we can care for not only creation, but also one another. Uh, hopefully, you can join us in two weeks. We have um, Edie ha Evans Hyde will be here with us talking about the intersection of theater and justice and how the arts can help illuminate other aspects of justice. So that's in two weeks on a Thursday night. That information's on the Catholic Information Center website. And yes, it'll be on Zoom as well. So we hope you can join us, folks from Jersey and, and Ohio and all parts of faraway places. Uh, take good care and good night. Mm -hmm.